This is the AccuArc ruler, invented in the 1950s by James E. Hoyle. It has a straight edge with a sliding, spring-loaded, hatchet-shaped curved edge. You loosen the locking nut and slide it back and forth along this scale. And it bends the hatchet part to have a specific radius of curvature. It goes all the way to infinity. This thing is made for drawing curves, specifically arcs of circles. Like, say I want to connect these three points with a curve, specifically the way that a circle would go through them. I suppose I could try to freehand it like this. Oh, that was pretty terrible. A real drafter would do it better, but in the old days when this stuff was a big deal, those guys didn't want to freehand anything. They wanted tools to draw this stuff precisely. One common drafting tool for curves is what they called the French curves, but these aren't really meant for mathematical precision. You just kind of pick one that you think looks good and you trace across it. These can make for a pretty drawing, but it's very hard to modify or reconstruct your drawing after the fact. Now, if you really want to draw an arc of a circle, the standard tool, of course, is a compass. Everybody's got one of these. You set the radius however you want, and then you do it. But the usual compass is not exactly easy to use, and they're typically small, so it's mostly good only for fairly tight curves. Like those three points from before, you would need a giant compass to connect them up with an arc. I mean, there is a circular arc between those three points, but if you think about it, the circle would have to be really big, like the center of that circle would be way off the bottom of the screen. See, tight curves come from small circles, and gentle curves come from big circles. That's actually the simplest way that mathematicians measure how tightly curved an arc is. You imagine the full circle that the arc comes from, and you look at the radius of that circle. That's called the radius of curvature. A tight curve has a small radius of curvature, and a gentle curve has a big radius of curvature. When the radius gets really, really big, the curve begins to look like a straight line. So it's common to say that a straight line has a radius of curvature equal to infinity. That's a lot. The radius of curvature is exactly what the AccuArc ruler is all about. The scale down here is the radius of curvature in inches. So if I want an arc with curvature radius equal to, say, 10 inches, I just dial this thing over here to 10, and there you go. It also works as a measuring tool. If I have an arc already drawn on my paper, I can measure the curvature by sliding this thing until it matches and reading it off the scale. This one goes to 11. Naturally, I wanted to know how accurate this thing is, and actually, now that I think of it, I have some concerns. Basically, what we have here is a bendy thing, and when you move these two points closer together, it bends more. But does that really bend like a circle would? I mean, geometrically, does that shape really make an arc of a circle? This thing is like a pole vaulter's pole, right? It wants to be straight, but you bend it by pushing the two endpoints together. But a bending pole doesn't make a circle, does it? I mean, it's like much more curved in the middle than it is on the ends. Looks to me more like a parabola or maybe a catenary, some kind of ellipse maybe. I mean, just because it's curved doesn't mean that it's the arc of a circle, right? So what shape exactly is it? I tried to look this up and let's just say there's no simple answer. The mathematics of bending beams was developed in the 1700s by Euler and Bernoulli. And in most cases, it results in shapes that are described by differential equations which can't be solved analytically. So you don't always get a curve that makes an ordinary nice kind of shape. But the AccuArc ruler isn't just a bent beam. It also has these springs in it which pull the struts together. And I guess they try to equalize the curvature as you move across the thing. So that should make it circular, I guess, or pretty close at least. I don't know, maybe some expert in the mathematical beam theory could figure this out for us, but I ain't that guy. Let's just measure it. I drew four arcs with radius 7, 8, 9, and 10 inches. I scanned it into my computer, hopefully avoiding any distortion from a camera lens, and here's what they look like. The arcs that I drew look very close to perfect circle arcs. And I can measure the radius too, and it really is what it says on the scale. I'm impressed, especially from this decades-old plastic. And the AccuArc ruler is still being made today. You can buy them new for about $55. This website says it's used by architects, engineers, chiropractors, designers, woodworkers, metalworkers, surveyors, carpet installers, and law enforcement. Law enforcement? What kind of crimes are we doing out here?
Actually, the AccuArc ruler wasn't the only drafting tool with the AccuArc brand on it. They also made the AccuArc curve. It's a plastic thing that bends and holds its shape so you can match a curve on paper and then reproduce it on another piece of paper. Looks pretty interesting, but I don't have one. And I just discovered that James E. Hoyle created another invention, one that has nothing to do with curves or anything. It's actually an invention that I've used myself even when I was a kid, decades before I'd ever heard of James E. Hoyle, inventor of the AccuArc ruler and AccuArc curve. Probably you've used one too. Did you notice in those nice company photos, there's always a pencil there, a pencil with that triangular plastic grip thing on it. Well, that's because in the late 1970s, James E. Hoyle invented the original triangular pencil grip was endlessly copied, but this guy did it first. It's weird, James E. Hoyle invented a sophisticated tool with a non-obvious design, built his own business to market and sell this thing. Just imagine all the time, expertise, and hard work it took for him to conceive of and build the AccuArc ruler. But if James Hoyle is remembered by history, it'll probably be for this thing. Simple hunk of rubber, something he probably came up with in just a few minutes. These two things are like opposite ends of the spectrum. One is very sophisticated and so specialized that almost nobody ever used it. The other is simple, so simple that you don't even notice it, even if there's one in your kitchen right now. And I wonder, which one did James E. Hoyle take pride in as his life's work? Which is the greater accomplishment? I don't know.